Hi there. In this video, I'm going to take a quick look at how we can use tabs to align um, kind of makeshift columns of content. So I'm going to create a brand new document. So if I just choose File, New, again, you get a list of a whole bunch of templates that you can use to make quite attractive documents right out of the gates. I'm just going to create a blank document, however. And I'm just going to type about um, six lines or seven lines of text just so that you can get an idea about how all this works. So it helps to have show hide on. And I'm just going to create a shopping list with prices. So I'll say shopping list. List. And I'll put, hit enter. And let's just make this a little bigger. As we saw. I just want to see a little bit of the page edge there. It's good enough for me. And I'll type in um, product. Now you always, if you want to align columns using tabs, you just want one tab character between each piece of text. So I'm going to have three columns of text. So I'll hit tab once for my second. Now notice that it just I hit tab, but you can barely see that mark there. It might help to zoom out. No, it doesn't help at all. But as long as you've hit tab, you'll, you can rest assured that there will be a tab there. If not, you can always put one in. But I did hit it, and I do see something there. You'll see the next one a little more clearly, I think. So it's amount, and then I hit tab. There we go. So that's a tab character there. And again, you will only see those if you have your show hide on. So you should only have one of these between each chunk of text, which will be your, we'll call them columns, though, although they're not really technically columns. And I'm going to type in eggs, and I'll hit uh, one dozen. Tab. Again, that one's very small. 2.95. Enter. Milk. Tab. 2 liters. I'm in Canada, so we use liters. I hit tab. 2.31. Enter. Bread. Tab. One loaf. Tab, $2, enter, and I'll add just two more lines of text here. Apples, tab, six, tab, $2, enter, and oranges, tab, 12, tab, $5. So it doesn't look so good right now. Everything seems out of whack, but you'll see once I add the tabs that will, it'll pull everything after that tab character that I entered by hitting tab on my keyboard to where I set my tabs. So in order to do this, we need to have our ruler visible. So again, I showed you that in the previous lesson, but it's under the view menu. And if I just drag this a little wider, under the so show section, we have ruler there. So <clears throat> we have these little options here. Now what these do will choose how the text is aligned after that tab character. So I want all of my second column to be aligned left. So basically the left edge will be a straight line, everything else will be kind of uh, lined up to that. And I wanted to put it about halfway through uh, between the margins. And this one, this piece of text here, I could have that aligned right. It might look best or left. Or notice that we all of these pieces of text have a decimal. So we have a decimal alignment as well. So first of all, let's take care of this first one. So this one here is left tab alignment. So if I just click, 
First of all, I have to select all the text that I wish to um, affect with my tab alignments, my tab settings. So I'm going to select all of those paragraphs. So again, I typed in all of the content and now I'm changing the appearance of it. And that's generally your practice when working with Microsoft Word. You want to type everything in and then you want to change how it looks. So I'm going to click at about 2.5. So you just put the point, the tip of your pointer right inside of the ruler there. So notice it's right in the ruler and then I click and I get this little L which means left tab. So basically it's indicating that the text will be lined up to that vertical portion and then it'll go off to the right. So that's a left tab there. Now the next one I can add I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose a decimal tab because these have decimals so I can align them up with the decimal. So I'm going to click this repeatedly until I see something that looks like an upside down T with a little dot. There we go. And then I'll click at about maybe five. So you notice that it lined everything up by the decimal. For any text that didn't have a decimal, it used a right alignment. So it lined it up so it went off to the left. Its right edge will be in line with that. <clears throat> so if I wish to change these, I can just put the tip of my pointer right on that little character and move it somewhere else. Inversely, if you want to get rid of it, what you can do is just, again, it's very small, so you have to put the tip of your pointer right on that little mark there so you get that decimal tab, tab flag, the name of the tab flag, and then if you just click and just drag down slightly, notice once I get down to the uh, white edge, it fades away there. When I let go of the mouse, it'll disappear. So again, just click on the ruler bar, ruler bar to add it. Click and drag to move it. If you want to get rid of it, just click and drag down. And again, I need to point out, because a lot of people miss this, oh, all of the paragraphs that I want to affect with these tab settings are selected presently. You have to add your content, hit tab between each column, and then select everything and add your tabs. Now if you wish to change this to something else, let me just quickly show you that. So I've got a left tab here, I'm just going to drag this one down, and I'll use this one. I'm going to click repeatedly until I have one that points the other way. A right align tab. There we go. And I'll click on 5 there. Now, um, if you want to squeeze these lines a little, to get a little closer together, I'm going to go to my home. And under this little line of paragraph spacing, I'm going to twirl that, and I'm going to say remove space after paragraph. Notice that that squeezes everything together. Now, frequently when we have these column layouts, you'll see this in a phone book. For those of you who have seen a phone book, um, we have something called a dot leader, and that helps guide the eye along to the associated piece of information that goes to that row. If we don't have a little line to guide us, we might read eggs as two liters instead of eggs as one dozen. Your eye will drop down as you read across. So what I'm going to do is add a dot leader, but not to this first line. I don't want dots from product to amount. I just want these dots from eggs to one dozen. So I'm going to select from eggs to oranges. Again, as long as a portion of that paragraph is selected, this paragraph level formatting, which is tabs, will affect the entire paragraph. Let me just reposition this a bit. There we go. Um, so where we find those dot leaders is under the paragraph section. We have this additional paragraph formatting options button here. That's what I call these things. If I click on that little icon there, way down at the bottom here, 
we have the tabs button that accesses the tabs dialog. So it shows me, again, I have all of this text selected. So it's showing me for the selected text that we have a tab at 2.5 inches and at 5 inches. If I click on this tab, it tells me it's a left tab. If I click on this 5 one, it tells me it's a right tab. So I wish, if I wish to change that, I can change that here as well as dragging that off and putting a new one in. So two ways to do that. Now I want a dot leader for, for my two and a half. So that, that'll mean a dot leader for everything to the left of two and a half inches. So if I select two and a half, then I choose these little dots, and then I choose set. That'll give me a little dotted line between eggs and one dozen. I want to do the same thing between one dozen and its price there. So I'm going to choose five and dots and set. And I choose OK. So that's adding dot leaders. And once I click my little show hide, it'll look a little better. Now, if you make a mistake, um, sometimes I'll frequently sh I'll show you what frequently happens. Sometimes I'll see students end up with stuff like this. When they go to click to move a tab or to place a tab, they accidentally add tabs. So there's a whole bunch there. And sometimes, I'm just going to quickly show you what happens. If I click in this line, have a bunch of tabs here. Notice when I click on this line here, those ones disappear. So if you have a bunch of line, different lines selected, you selected one at a time, for example, instead of all of them when you set your tabs, you'll see when you go from line to line that they each have different tab settings. And this is something I'll be looking at when I mark your assignment and you will get marks off if I see something like that. For three columns, you should only have a margin and then two tab settings. So to clear all of these out, what I'll do is I'll select all of my paragraphs. I'll go back to my paragraph tabs dialog and I'll choose clear all. And I choose OK. And that gets rid of all of the tabs for the presently selected paragraphs. So again, I'm just going to quickly set these ones. I'll go something like three and maybe six. There we go. And then I want to add my dot leaders again. Now I frequently work with uh, people who haven't taken a word class and I'll, um, they'll hire me to do a little bit of formatting in a document and I'll, I'll set up a, an arrangement like this. Uh, this is something you see very commonly in an index. And then they'll go to try to do something similar but instead of adding these little dots they'll add periods. They don't know how to make these dot leader leaders. So that's something I commonly see. With, when you do that, nothing will ever be in line unless you use a Unicode for those dots as well as this text. So this is the only, this is the correct way to get everything all lined up properly. So that's basically um, tabs. Now I'm going to quickly, I'm just going to quickly center this shopping list. So this is something I frequently see people do as well. If they go to center that shopping list, for some reason some people think, oh, why don't I just push it over with my margin? That's not correct. It's not something that needs to be done. Margins are just to reposition the left side of selected text. If you want to center this title, you just simply use center, the center alignment tool. 
All right, that's pretty much tabs in a nutshell. Um, again, very important to type in your content, add a tab between each column. So again, there's only one tab there, one tab there. We have three columns, one tab between those columns. We added all of the text first, and then we selected all of the text we wish, wish to align. We added the tab marks on a ruler, and then we selected the text that we wanted to add dot leaders to. We went into the tabs dialog, selected those tab marks, chose the dots, and set them. Thanks so much for watching.